Hi guys, look what arrived in the mail today. My new little ZVE10. I'm calling them Doug, cause ZVE10 is hard to say and I love this thing. Oh my God, it's built so much better than I thought it was going to. All the, the reviews of the people who got the early release, they were saying it felt cheap. This feels solid to me. I have felt cheap cameras and this is not it. It's got a little plastic here on the grip, but it's got some metal. It's got some weight to it. It's just, it's got this nice, very sturdy flip screen. I'm super impressed with the build quality of this thing. Maybe it's because they lowered my expectations. Anyway, on the channel, obviously I've done a lot of ZV-E10 comparisons, but I've gotten some questions in the comments like, do you own the ZV-E10? Have you had any hands-on experience? One guy actually said, you don't own the camera. All you do is talk BS. Well, I got the camera now, buddy. What do you got to say about that? Let's talk about it. This is going to be a short video about stability. We're going to have tons of ZV-E10 content, how-tos, best color grading, best video settings. Make sure to subscribe and to see all of that content. Well, today I went out to my backyard and I did a stability test. And I tell you what, I will show you an excerpt from it right away because I was blown away. Blown! And now this is how I would legitimately use the camera. I just walk around my neighborhood or my backyard because it's COVID and I'm afraid of people. I would uh, talk to the camera like this, listen to this giant air conditioner, be super loud, walk away from it, listen to the crickets, it's way too noisy out here. I like a controlled environment. Anyway, I'm a vlogger today, so me, 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 me. Look at how cool I am. Pretty cool. Check out my tats. Don't have any. We'll get some. I will. Vloggy, vlogger some. Vloggy. Now, chances are, I'm going to put this through Catalyst Browse because that is how I think you should use this if you're going to use it as a vlogging camera. Even though nobody seemed to mention that on the initial reviews of the camera. Everyone was saying it's not a good vlogging camera. Well, if you use Catalyst Browse, maybe it is, right? Did you see that? The Catalyst Brows, it's like magic. I, I don't understand. All these reviewers were reviewing the camera. They had the thing up. They're looking at Doug and they're swinging it around. They're like, this thing is not a great vlogging camera. Look, there's no stability, is it? It has gyroscope information in it. And you stick that into Catalyst Brows and it comes out like a gimbal. It looks exactly like when I have a camera on a gimbal. I'm And I'm uh, to, to give you my settings, I'm just cropping in 10%. So you do a 10% crop in and you get footage that smooth. Now, one other thing is that you should set your uh, shutter speed to uh, 1 over 200. And, you know, a lot of times you like to set it to 1 over 50 to get that smooth cinematic motion. But if you do that, that's a little too slow for Catalyst Browse, so you're going to get some stutter. But you set it to 1 over 200 and it will come out smooth as silk. So I have some more tests coming up. But first, I'll tell you, you may have noticed some lovely bokeh. And that's because of this bad boy here. This is the Sigma 16mm f1.4. It is for the Sony E-mount, obviously. It pairs very well with Doug. He's a bit bigger than the kit lens, but Doug is willing to put up with that because you get that lovely shallow depth of field. Now, I'm just telling you this because in the test coming up, I'm going to use the kit lens. A lot of you will be ordering the kit lens with the camera, so I want you to see what the actual kit lens looks like. First up, I'll do 4K. We'll do it with no stability, lens stability, the e-stabilization, which is all of the stability, and, uh, and then Catalyst Browse. And uh, here we go. Once again, Catalyst Browse is the cat's meow. Did you see that? I mean, you can use the uh, the e-stabilization crop if you back it up a little bit, and it, but to me, it's worth it to put the time in to Catalyst Browse. And in case you're wondering about what time it is, it, for me, it, to do a one minute clip on my computer, it took three minutes to render it. So bear that in mind. If you're doing a long vlog and you, you've done it for an hour, it's gonna take three hours of rendering time to get that nice smooth footage, but that is worth it. And now I'll show you 1080 because a lot of people were saying they think the stabilization might be better in 1080 on the ZV-E10 compared to 4K. So we'll do the 1080 footage now.
there you go I didn't see a ton of difference so I put them side by side and uh, you can judge for yourself personally I don't see a lot of difference there might be a little bit better rolling shutter on the 1080 and uh, I'll just put them up together now Now the last walking test I did, and I should tell you, I'm walking fairly briskly up and down my yard, making my neighbors think I'm totally insane. And maybe I am. But anyway, I'm just walking back at a fairly rapid pace. You could slow it down and make it even smoother if you want, but who needs to when you get that catalyst browse? So I'll actually end a walking segment using the Sigma 16mm because this is the lens that I would use if I was out and about. So I will show you what that looks like. Now, of course, there will be no lens stabilization because there's no lens stabilization in the Sigma. So you're just gonna get no stabe and the E-stabe and then the catalyst brass. Lastly, I want to talk about the rolling shutter and give you an example because I didn't find I had a ton of rolling shutter when I was out because I used the camera like a regular human being. Like the way they were testing it in all of the YouTube tests, they would just take it and they would, but that, that is not how you use a camera. You try to be smooth. You try to make a nice pan. And if you do that, you're not going to get everything wobbling around like jello. It's going to be okay. Rolling shutter has been around in a lot of cameras for a lot of years. The whole A6000 series, which most people love, and I didn't hear constant rolling shutter talk back then. Well, this has the same sensor and it has the same rolling shutter. So yes, if you're whipping it around, if you're moving really fast, you are going to get a jello effect. So don't do that. Also, Catalyst Browse will pretty much correct that. Here's an example. Seriously, the way everyone was swinging this camera around in the pretest was ridiculous. That's not how you use a camera. Guys, don't be worried about the rolling shutter. It's been a thing on a lot of cameras for a long time now. These people are used to cameras like the A7S III or maybe some cine camera with global shutter. But look at this. If you use the camera like a regular human being, you're not gonna see that jello effect. Just be smooth with your movements. Come on. Anyway, I can't help but be super excited about this camera. I thought maybe it would just be a stationary camera. I'd put it, you know, on a tripod as a second angle or maybe an overhead camera. But to see the way Catalyst Browse works with this thing and the eye autofocus was so fantastic. And the flip screen where I can see everything, this is just really, really fun to use. Make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna do some guides, some deep menu dives so that uh, you guys can set up your camera. Got a little Sony experience, might be able to help you out in that regard. Anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, I gotta, I gotta be careful. Doug is not weather sealed. Don't forget to like and comment. We'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.